Well, good morning, good evening, good night. Um, my sister Diane is with me tonight. We're giving Eric a break. I told you yesterday that we'd be going on a vacation to visit my mom, who I saw today, and she looks fabulous, of course. And uh, Diane, I'm just going to pop the pillow behind me here. Mm -hmm. There we go. Diane has really fine print in her Bible, so if she's reading slowly, it's because this little teeny, I would never go with her Bible. And so, as usual, we're going to go, where is St. Marie, actually? I better tell you that. Oh, St. Marie. Okay. And it's actually snowing today here. And what we do is, see the little light on the, on the top of the computer? Oh, That's yes. the camera. So I pretend I'm actually reading it to someone I love, like you can read it to one of your grandchildren. And I pretend that's the eye of St. Luke and my grandson. And I just tell them the story from God's Word. Oh, and it, it makes it more natural and more easy. And uh, maybe actually someday Luke and my grandson will actually watch these videos. Tonight we're reading from Numbers. We're continuing on. And it's day 58, February 27th, day 58, that we're reading for you. And it's called A Bouquet of Praise. So I'll open with prayer, and then we'll begin to read of chapter 17. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the freedom we have to share your word of God over the internet for people who are searching for you, maybe people who don't have a Bible, or people who have one and can't read anymore. We thank you, Almighty God, that you've given us this gift that we can read your holy word. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you give us understanding, and please help us to read clearly and concisely and accurately according to your word as it's written. Bless us as we read and bless everyone who tunes in and listens. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This is my sister Diane. I don't know if I told you. And I'm Linda. And I'm reading from the NIV Bible. And she's reading from... Um, here. Life application. That's the one I was Very good. <coughs> it's a good Bible. This is a very small print. Oh, okay, the first uh, subject is called The Budding of Aaron Staff. And if you remember yesterday, there was a lot of grumbling going on in the camp. And God actually struck <coughs> dead a whole tribe of people. And then other people grumbled about God's judgment on those people. So God sent a plague, and the plague started killing people. And Moses and Aaron said, oh, please, God, don't wipe out the Israelites. It's going to look really bad to the other nations if you bring your people up and kill them. And so they ran ahead, and they ran ahead with um, kind of like a, um, I can't remember the words, uh, census, and it was like an atonement census. They ran ahead, and as they ran, it stayed God's hand. And that showed us that when we really pray, sometimes God's wrath is turned back, and we can pray for salvation for people. It's so encouraging. So today we're going to find out what God does after that. And I'll start reading, and what we do, Diane, is, I read a paragraph, and they don't always end at the same place in my Bible as yours. So when it gets this little space here, I'll just say uh, verse such and such, and that's where you go ahead and read until yours comes to a break, and then you say to me verse such and such, and then I read, and we keep doing that for the chapter. We're going to read chapter 17 and 18 for the first part. Hopefully we'll get it all read, 18 is long, and then we'll do part two in the last the chapter 19 and then the reading in Mark. Okay, the Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and get 12 staffs from them, one from the leaders of each of their ancestral tribes. Write the names of each man on a staff. On the staff of Levi, write Aaron's name, for there must be one staff for the head of each ancestral tribe. Place them in the tent of meeting in front of the testimony where I meet with you. The staff belonging to the man I choose will sprout. And, it will, and I will rid myself of this constant grumbling against you by the Israelites. Verse 6. So Moses gave the instructions to the people of Israel. And each of the twelve tribal leaders, <coughs> including Aaron, <coughs> brought Moses' staff. Moses put the staffs in the Lord's presence in the tabernacle of the covenant. When he went into the tabernacle of the covenant the next day, he found that Aaron's staff, representing the tribe of Levi, had sprouted bloom and bloom and produced almonds. Verse nine. Okay, verse nine. And mine didn't stop this with nine. Here's almonds. This is amazing. 
that a dead piece of wood not only bloomed, but it produced almonds. Okay, then Moses brought all the spies <coughs> from the Lord's presence to all the Israelites. They looked at them, and each man took his own staff. The Lord said to Moses, put back Aaron's staff in front of the testimony to be kept as a sign of, to the rebellious. This will put an end to their grumbling against me so that they will not die. And Moses did just as the Lord commanded him. The Israelites said to Moses, we will die. We are lost. We are all lost. Anyone who ever comes near the tabernacle of the Lord will die. Are we all going to die? Okay, now verse 18. It is there. Duties of the present and the Levites. The Lord <clears throat> now said to Aaron, You, your sons and your relatives from the tribe of Levi, will be held responsible for any offenses related to the sanctuary. But you and your sons alone <coughs> will be held liable for violations connected with the priesthood. Two. Well, that's short. Verse 2. <coughs> Bring your fellow Levites from your ancestral tribe to join you and assist you when you and your sons minister before the tent of the testimony. They are to be responsible to you and are to perform all of the duties of the tent. But they must not go near the furnishings of the sanctuary or the altar, or both they and you will die. They are to join you and be responsible for the care of the tent of meeting, all the work of the tent, and no one else may come near where you are. Verse 5. You yourselves must perform the Sabbath sacred duties within the sanctuary at the altar. If you follow these instructions, the Lord's anger will never again blaze against the people of Israel. Um, I myself have chosen your fellow Levites from among the Israelites to be your special assistants. They are dedicated to the Lord for the service in the tabernacle. But you and your sons, the priests, must personally handle all the sacred service um, associated with the altar and everything within the inner curtain. I am giving you the priesthood as your special gift of service. Any other person who comes too near the sanctuary will be put to death. Why? There was a lot of death sentences, Diane. We read a lot about these sacrifices and the sins that God abhorred, and everyone just about ended in the death sentence. We are so fortunate to have salvation through Christ mm -hmm. and His grace. It was like uh, it was chapter after chapter after chapter of blood and death. It was almost depressing to read it. But you know what? It's important that we do that we know where we come from and, and what we gained. Yes, right. through the death of Christ. Yeah, you know? so amazing. Okay, now I'm going to read the offering for priests and Levites. Then the Lord said to Aaron, "I myself." I put you in charge of the offerings present to me. All the holy offerings the Israelites gave me, I give to you and your sons as your portion and regular share. You are to have the part of the most holy offering that is kept from the fire. From all the gifts they bring me as most holy offerings, whether grain or sin or guilt offerings, that part belongs to you and your sons. Eat it as something most holy. Every male shall eat it. You must regard it as holy. This is about, um, uh, like us, when we put a tithe in a church, a lot of it goes to support, you know, the maintenance of church. Some goes to missions and ministries and outreach and charities, but some is kept for the people who are our clergy, our priests and our officers of the church. And so God's giving part of the offerings to the Levites. So we do a similar thing in our Christian church. Verse 11. All the other offerings presented to me by the Israelites, by lifting them up before the altar, also belong to you as your regular share. Any member of your family who is ceremonially clean, male and female alike, may eat of these offerings. Verse 12. I give you all the first finest olive oil and all the finest new wine, grain, and 
give the Lord as the first fruits of your harvest. All the land's first fruits that they bring to the Lord will be yours. Everyone in your household who is ceremonially clean may eat it. Verse 14. Whatever is special specialty set apart for the Lord also belongs to you. The firstborn of every mother, whether human or animal, that is offered to the Lord will be yours. But you must always redeem your firstborn sons and firstborn males of ritually unclean animals. Redeem them when they are one month old. The redemption price is five pieces of silver, each piece weighing the same as the standard sanctuary shekel. Verse 17. But you must not redeem the firstborn of an ox, a sheep, or a goat. They are holy. Sprinkle their blood on the altar and burn their fat as an offering made by fire, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Their meat is to be yours, just as the breast of the wave offering are, and the right thigh are yours. Whatever is set aside from the holy offering the Israelites present to the Lord, I give to you and your sons and daughters as your regular share. It is an everlasting covenant of salt before the Lord for both you and your offspring. Verse 20. And the Lord said to Aaron, you, uh, you priests will receive no inheritance of the land or share of property among the people of Israel. I am your inheritance and your share. As for the tribe of Levi, your relatives, I will pay them for their services in the tabernacle with the tithes from the entire land of Israel. Verse 22. Now, it may end in the middle of the next part of the reading, according to my watch. So I'll be trying to watch, and we'll continue in the next section if it does. Verse 22. From now on, the Israelites must not go near the tent of meeting, or they will bear the consequences of their sin and will die. It is the Levites who are to do the work of the tent of meeting and bear the responsibility of, for offenses against it. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. They will receive no inheritance among the Israelites. Instead, I give to the Levites as their inheritance the tithes that the Israelites present as an offering to the Lord. That is why I said concerning them, they will have no inheritance amongst the Israelites. Verse 25. No, 25. Yeah. The Lord also told Moses, say this to the Levites. When you receive <coughs> the tithes from the Israelites, give a tenth of the tithes you receive a, a tithe of the tithe to the Lord as a gift. The Lord will consider this to be your harvest offering as though it were the first grain from your own threshing floor or wine from your own wine press. You must present one tenth of the tithe received from the Israelites as a gift to the Lord. Uh, from this, you must present the Lord's portion to Aaron, the priest. Be sure to set aside the best portions of the gifts given to you as your gifts to the Lord. Verse 30. Say to the Levites, when you present the best part, it will be reckoned to you as the produce of the threshing floor or the wine press. You and your household may eat the rest of it anywhere, for it is your wage for your work at the tent of meetings. By presenting the best part of it, you will not be guilty in that matter. Then you will not defile the holy offering, the Israelites, and you will not die. So even the Levites had the tithes. So they were given a portion to eat and live off, but a portion of that what they were given was to consider their harvest, and of that they had to give a tenth as well. So. He, he, everybody had to tithe, and uh, we tithe, and uh, we tithe, I think, a minimum of 10 percent, because all that we have comes from the Lord, and so all he requires back is less than the government requires, only 10 percent. And as we are obedient to the Lord, God Almighty Creator, we find that he blesses us so wonderfully. So our time is, we still have a little bit extra time. Wow. Yeah. Did you have any thoughts that you wanted to share?